Change is a piece all about finding its groove. On the small scale, change evolves to find its groove at the ends of sections, and on a large scale, change evolves to find its groove in the middle of the piece and at the end. Change finds its grooves through two competing processes. Process 1 involves change's rhythmic dissonance and stutters, while process 2 involves change's tonal, temporal, and textural elements. Let's look at process 1 first. First in process 1, we will look at what I'm calling a stutter. A stutter is any fragment of the main motive or melody that results in a hiccup or a subversion of expectations. You can see stutters on the screen, and all stutters moving forward will be highlighted in this red color I have here. First we have the main melody, which becomes a stutter by only repeating the first two beats of it. These stutters are littered throughout the A section, especially in the beginning, however, occur throughout the piece. As the piece evolves, these stutters become more involved and begin to happen less frequently. As they begin to happen less frequently, they begin to become phrase endings. The stutters are now coming towards the end of phrases and they are also signaling at the ends of phrases when we're going to have a stutter to start back up. The phrase ending in purple and the stutter in red in combination can be heard in the following audio example. <laughs> The next piece of process one that we will look at is changes rhythmic dissonance, or how the percussive aspects of the melody interact with the other instruments that are playing. As you can see on this slide shown, the starts of sections tend to have this very split-like atmosphere where voices are splitting the melody, voices are interacting on a 16th note or 8th note basis, and their composite idea forms the melody. <laughs> and evolves to the end of the section where all of the instruments are playing together in a more or less unison way. Obviously that's going to be a little bit different towards the end of every section, but every section follows the same trend. You can see this progression towards non-rhythmic dissonance and unified melodies in the A section. We have a single instrument in the flute start it. Every instrument comes in by the end on the unified melody. Same thing with the B section. We go to a couple instruments starting at this time. It's a little bit different. By the end, we have a little bit less unified of a melody, but that's not a really big deal because everyone is, for the most part, unified. C section starts the same trend. Two instruments interlocking to form the melody. By the end, we've got everyone on some sort of melody that's filling in every note or the instruments that have chords. So that'll be the end of the discussion for process one. Process one was all the elements like rhythmic dissonance and stutters that fade away as the piece progresses. And now process two will be the tonal, temporal, textural, and phrasing elements of the piece. These elements will increase in complexity towards the ends of sections as well as holistically as we find our groove. So let's start this process by talking about the tonal aspects. These are going to evolve as the piece progresses. You look at the A section material here pictured on screen. We're going to start in E minor solidly. We're going to move to the B section. We're going to make a key shift. However, we're not going to move any accidentals. Key signature is going to be the exact same. Then as we move to the C section, you're going to see accidentals pop up. We're basically using almost every chromatic pitch on the screen. We have F sharps, F naturals, C sharps, C naturals. Then by the end of the C section and the transition into D where we have our 7-8, we're going to blow the lid off the thing, we're going to have key changes galore. Every chromatic pitch is pictured, all voices are moving through keys fluidly, we don't really have a home base until we land at the 7-8. The second element of the second process that we are going to talk about are the temporal elements. The time signatures are going to start to go through little changes that become big and escalate. We're going to start in 3-4, both the A and the B section in 3-4 move to 5-4 for the C section. By the end of the C section, we're going to move through 5-4, 6-4 as we transition into 7-8, go back through 5-8, 6-8, 5-4, 7-4, and then we're going to land at E in our first big groove spot, our first moment of stability with a 4-4 groove section. The third element of process two is going to be the textural element. This is going to be the density and the number of voices playing together. It's going to be basically me talking about the exact opposite of what I was talking about with the rhythmic dissonance. We're always going to start with one or two instruments playing. You can see that in the A section, the B section, the C section, and the D section alike until we get to E. Every section is going to start off small and then build to the end. The last element in process two is phrasing. Phrasing starts out incredibly consistent in the A section with three bar phrases, but then towards the B section, 
We start to change that, move to four bar phrases, then two bar phrases as we abandon this idea. The keys and stuff get swirly, so we don't really have landing spots as we move through C and D to transfer until we get to E and we begin that 4-4 groove section. Now it's time to go over the goals of each subsection that we're working towards in the builds through these two competing processes. The goal of subsection A is 55 to the end of the section, which would be 87, heard here and seen here. Next, in the B section, our goal starts at 134 and progresses to the end of the section, which is 158. So first in the C section, what we'll talk about is the first major stutter that we've had since the beginning of B. So as we swirl our way through all the changes that are happening to the material during C, we're going to arrive at D, our fake out arrival point. This is going to be in 7A and is basically going to be the same thing that you're going to hear during our groove section that we're working towards, but just with one eighth note missing. <laughs> Our next section, the E section, was what all four of the sections that came before were working up to. We were working up to this arrival point groove moment, the same thing that we got at the start of the D section, except now in its full form, where we can just sit back as a listener and groove to what's going on. <laughs> final section of the piece, we've worked our way through a bunch of transitions. These two competing processes converge on a two minute long groove section that lasts from measure 39 all the way to the end. Yeah. 